When the movie ended, JP went upstairs in the basement, immediately returning to get me and Rory. I sat by myself, listening to their heavy feet run across the kitchen tile. At the top of the stairs, I saw my brothers leaning over my dad, who laid flat on the couch. There were drops of throw up on his shirt, his mouth surrounded by purple, made that way from the blood and stomach fluids holding his body upright, his head bent backwards, resting on my shoulder. Wake up, Daddy. Wake up. The 911 operator instructed me to search his pale, freckled skin for a pulse. My broken heart thrust in so fast I told myself the pulse in my hand was his. My mother and sister ran down the stairs. My ro Uncle Robert ran in through the front door and lifted my father's body into the carpet. KJ and Tom, my neighbors, ran through the back. KJ started performing CPR frantically on, don't give up on me, Jimmy. In minutes, my house was crowded with policemen and EMTs. The machine searched for a pulse. Robotically, three, two, one. No pulse detected. Reposition the person. Three, two, one. No pulse detected. Reposition the person. Tom wrapped his arms around me, whispering for me to pray. My knees anchored to ground, my arms held up my body, my hands dug into the back of my neck. My sister ran rosary beads through her nervous fingers, words stuck to my lips, my prayers in a chapel of silence to a God I don't know how to speak to, in a language of no language, an unspoken tongue of the ancient beginning preserved in our humanity and struggle, the transcendence of expression, the wordless, the inexplainable, and what made my sister find God then? She recited the two prayers that she knew. Hope and reality thrashed at her, violently losing and gaining ground. Her soul simultaneously detaching and attaching. Rory leaned over my father's body, professing love, thrusting to reach over the widening expanse, reaching for daddy, crying to keep what he couldn't. Hollowed hands holding air. JP sat in shredded pride, momentarily consumed in portraits of childhood. On January 4th, 2010, in the waiting room of the hospital, the death confirmed, my mother's gates broke, water rushing from her cheek, she fell into my arms, and I held her, like I knew something she didn't, like anyone knows anything of this, like there were words for this, his body laid flat on a hospital bed, broken pillars of a broken man, months later, time is the aggressive expansion, taking me further and further from him. Every week, month, it becomes more real and final. Do not give me your God and pretty catchphrases. I am not a lost soul for your savior. There is no savior, and I am not lost. I am soaked and dripping in nostalgia. All the days, before the bank, before the debt, before the fights, before the isolation and hurt. I was a little kid, all giggles and paper hearts, playing God with a crayon, knowing nothing and everything. The backyard was a baseball field. JP's room was an airplane, the woods a jungle that needed to be explored, the front yard a battlefield. Those years, the golden age. A family my parents built their life for, a class the love that birthed us, and I, small enough to fit in my daddy's arms, could lose myself in his comfort. I understood that, but now, if I could see his flesh full of blood, his face full of color. If he came to me while I stood at the foot of some view looking for some answer. If I saw his smile and remembered the love and how I'd hid from it. I would let him in and confess that my love never really stopped even when times got tough. When he saw his dream, his family break apart in his hands. I would tell him that we were all clumps of sand that lost grip. That every grain is still here. That I wrote poems on loving him and left them on the table hoping he'd see it. That I spent years 
trying to accept his love and give my own, that I just never really knew what to say, that I never meant to fight, I never meant to yell, I would say, I am Connor Robert McCluskey, your proud and younger son, sheltered inside ruins, supported by broken columns, moved by ripped sails, sucked in and spat out by the tornado. I have a soft step on earthquake, and my nerves have been spinning, catching onto mountains, laid over valleys, I'm stretched out on this land. There is electric in my voice and thunder while I sleep. I keep the bluebird alive even if it's dulled. I felt the delicate balance of life. I know I control nothing. I did not create a god to soothe me. I know hope is small, but there are poems born inside me every second I choose to live. There is no answer I can find. There is now in this and whatever I can make from it. There is every girl to romance. There is every friend to love. There is still family to hold. There is every poetry slam to win. There is every laugh. There is every poem. There is every small hope. There is still hope. Dad, this is goodbye. But you are gone. Your life, your dream, your family is still here. We are walking on the beach at the feet of the ocean, hovered over the mess of sand, looking for the right grains. Today, the wind is a buzz building beneath the birds, while I, shirtless, lay in the leaf-covered grass, my dog smiling and leading me into the woods, my mother's wind chimes catching the wind and returning gracefully. It is not yet spring. The trees are not alive. The leaf building, then pushing, finally breaking, open, and alive. I have been waiting and listening for the cracks. Every morning, before the sun woke, my father would go out into the back porch with his cup of coffee and watch the woods. Now, every morning I stand in his shadow, in the same spot as him, trying to see what he saw. Silence, the bending of branches, the cracking of leaves, the deep undergrowth, and the light from an approaching sun reaching just over the ridgeline.